In the event the authorities' demands are not met within one week, take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. Such measures may include the use of force. To this effect, the chiefs, the chiefs of defense staff of ECOWAS are to meet immediately. Following the Niger coup, you are aware that the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, have issued seven days ultimatum to the Juntas that if they did not return the power to the democratic elected president, that they are going to exercise a mandatory action against them. Now, there is a video I would like that every Nigerian, every African should listen to. Because I think this issue of Nijeku is an issue that we have to use diplomacy, not mandatory action, because of the consequences that could come in if there is any mandatory action that will be attempted against these people of Niger. And in this video, there is a Nigerian non Hollywood actor and a YouTuber. He is an outspoken man that reveals so many things that goes on in the world. His name is Joseph Okechuku. He spoke then in his video he published yesterday about why Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, the embattled president of Nigeria, should not think about military action against Niger. He said Nigeria would be on fire if Tinumbu does that. Take your time and listen to this video to the end. Hi everyone, I hope you are doing great today. Okay, so there's a very, very troubling development that I want to share with us all. And I'm going to plead with you to please share this video as widely as you possibly can, because this is an emergency. So either a year or two ago, I had a very, very scary dream. I actually made a video about it. Yeah. In that dream, I saw fighter jets that were dropping bombs on innocent people in Nigeria, especially in the city of Lagos. You know, I don't dream often, but whenever I dream, my dreams are very scary. My dreams used to wake me up in the middle of the night. It's not dreams that you dream and then whenever you wake up, you can start thinking to uh, remember the dream. No, mine wakes me up right while it's happening. That's how traumatic my dreams can be sometimes. And this was one of those moments when I had a very strong dream that woke me up in the middle of the night while I was dreaming it. And I made a video about it because it wasn't to be taken lightly. I knew it was a very serious thing. I knew it was a serious warning. That's why I made a video about it. And right now, there is something that is about to happen that is almost potentially looking like we, as a people, are about to walk ourselves into that nightmare of a dream that I made a video about some time ago. You know, there's something going on in the West African Hemisphere. There's something going on. You must have heard all this story about the multipolar world, that African leaders screaming every day nowadays saying they're tired of the unipolar world because the unipolar world that is controlled by Western colonial imperialist Europe just thinks that Africa is their playground that Africans are babies that we're not supposed to be equal partners. They treat us like slaves. They take from us whatever they want and make us look like idiots, literally. And it appears ever since this whole Russia-Ukraine war started, it appears that Africans have had enough because from the look of things, they have now seen that there is another superpower that they can run to, that we have an option. So it's almost like the availability of a plan B that we didn't have a sense of all along. Russia has provided that. 
And all of a sudden, Russia is showing that it can actually be a viable plan B. And that is why you saw what happened in Burkina Faso, where there was a coup d'etat, <clears throat> excuse me, and the coup plotters pledged allegiance to Russia and kicked France, the colonial power in that country for ages, and kicked them out of that place. The same thing happened in Mali. CAR, Central African Republic. It has now happened again in Niger Republic. And so literally, France is losing its colonies on the continent of Africa almost on a monthly basis. And as it's happening in Niger, nobody knows which other French colony in Africa is planning to also kick France out of their country. And once the queues happen, the first thing that happens is they pledge allegiance to Russia. And then they cancel the colonial agreement that enslaved those countries perpetually. I mean, if you want to know what France has done to some of these countries, watch one of the videos I did several years ago. If you go down on my YouTube channel, you will see the video where I detailed the level of bondage that France has committed these African colonies to. It is the worst form of colonial slavery or enslavement I've ever seen anywhere in the world. And at a point, he looked at this there was, as if there was never going to be any hope anywhere. Until suddenly it appeared that Russia could be a viable alternative as a big brother. And then we see African countries streaming towards Russia every day. I mean, it was very evident from the just concluded Russia-Africa summit that happened in St. Petersburg. And so let's get back to the real point. A queue has happened in Niger Republic and they have pledged allegiance to Russia again. And now it means that France has lost yet another powerful, another powerful African colony with all the resources they had access to in that country. The gold, the diamond that they can't do without. And Niger has too much of it. And you know what they do with these African colonies? They always have the right of first refusal whenever any new resource or mineral is found in that country. What that means is that with all the discovery of diamond and gold all over, only French countries are the first to be notified. They are the first to mine, to have access to them. They are the first to be considered before any other company from any other country in the world. That's a way of saying we own you and whatever is in your grounds. This cuts across all the French colonies all over Africa. That's just one of the many stifling satanic decrees with which they have bound these nations and ensured that they can never grow and become independent. That's what these people are kicking against. That's why you see coup d'etat happening everywhere. It has happened in Niger now. And guess what? France cannot bear it anymore. They have gathered their brothers, America, their partners, and the rest, and they've decided to heap a lot of pressure on the ECOWAS block. ECOWAS still has a lot of African leaders loyal to the colonial imperialist West. And so they are putting pressure on them. Tinubu of Nigeria is just been appointed the new head of the ECOWAS block and they are mounting so much pressure on him knowing that he has a lot at stake his thing is still being contested in court his opponents are still calling him illegitimate leader and look at the pressure they put on him and other people to go and intervene not just by negotiation I saw an ECOWAS briefing recently, which is why I'm making this video. 
in that briefing, they were saying that after one week, they are actually giving Niger guys ultimatum. After one week or so, if nothing has happened, if they have not had any breakthroughs with whatever other means they are trying to use, that they are going to intervene militarily on the soils of Niger. If military intervention did not work in Burkina Faso, did not work in Mali, in CAR, in other places, you want to now use it in Niger. And the Nigerians are genuinely happy with the coup d'etat that happened in their country. If you see how they poured out on the streets in support of the coup d'etat because they hate what France has turned their country to. They support the guys. They don't see them as ordinary cube plotters. They see them as freedom fighters. That's why they attacked French embassy today. And they have sent a serious warning to ECOWAS. Stay away from our internal affairs. Let France get out of our country for good. We don't need France here anymore. And ECOWAS, you must not interfere or else we treat you as enemies. This was boldly said, not just by the army, but by the people who are strongly, they are not pretending, it's not out of fear. They are boldly, joyfully saying it, that they love what has happened and that they will stand by the military coup plotters. Here's where the fear is coming from now. If Tinubu falls under pressure and orders a military intervention in Niger, see how these things work. The Nigerian guys are aware of who the ECOWAS leadership is on his shoulders. It is Tinubu, it is Nigeria. It will not be surprising to anyone if the moment ECOWAS strikes in Niger, if they do that, that you might see Nigerian planes descending on key targets in Nigeria and bombing places in order to put Tinubu under pressure to call off the strike. Because at this moment, the Niger guys are in a state of war. They have got nothing to lose. Nigerians are not in any state of war right now, even though there's an agitation. There's agitation all over the place. But it is Nigeria who will lose them. Niger is not far from Nigeria, just somewhere down there between Nigeria and Niger. It's not far. This is why I'm making this video. Because Niger may not attack all the countries in ECOWAS. They will pick the key countries that have a lot more to lose than Niger. And they will bomb you to stone ages and even crash their private jets or fighter jets in your country. Smash it into important locations, probably bomb civilians and say you are killing their own civilian. They're going to kill your own civilian. In fact, they can even make Nigeria the scapegoat, being that Nigeria is now heading the ECOWAS block. And the attack will be all over. The commercial city of Nigeria may be crippled. Things will happen. They could unleash even terrorists on your neck. You have no idea what the repercussions could be. They can decide to target just Nigeria to put pressure on the whole ECOWAS block. And the people who are putting these guys under pressure to go and attack militarily, are they not aware that this could happen? Are they not aware that this could result? I know that some of those men in ECOWAS also feel like this is a win-win for them. Because attacking simply means that they are going to send messages or a message to other Q plotters potentially planning to take over and strip France of their control and then hand that control over to Russia, whom they call a better big brother, whom they say is a better person to deal with or to have business with in the person of Putin. They say Putin respects them better. They say Putin isn't treating them like kids the way the colonial Europe treats them. 
there must be some other people planning to do the same thing in some of these other French colonies. And when they finish with French colonies, they will enter British colonies. So the fear in the hearts of these leaders who were appointed, handpicked by colonial Europe, the fear in their hearts is real. They believe that if they would strike and attack these cube plotters in Niger, it would also help to send the message down to other people who are planning the same thing so that they will not bring it to them. Because if they don't, this wave of toppling leaders or colonial leaning leaders in West Africa, this wave may not stop with Niger. It may continue. But of course, what do you expect when the people are not taken into consideration? When the leadership imposed by the West is only built to cater to the needs of the West and ignore all the needs of the people on ground. What do you expect? So there is fear. Even Tinubu himself knows that if care is not taken, if grievances are not properly addressed in Nigeria, what has happened to Burkina Faso, Mali, and the rest of them could happen to any African country, including Nigeria. That's why they feel, some of them, that it would be better to go and strike and send a message. But then, before you carry out such a strike, you have to count the cost. You have to think about the repercussions. What would happen to Nigeria if these guys decide to unleash and unload on Nigeria, like I said, they've got nothing to lose. Nigeria will have so much more to lose. This is a very serious development and I think that anybody who loves our people in Nigeria must please help me to share this video. Bola Ahmed Tinubu must be told to take it easy and not give in to too much pressure. The moment he caves into pressure and does this to please these guys, there might be a problem that many of us may not be able to walk out of easily. This is what I am seeing. It's just me in my usual way, seeing danger ahead. And screaming out loud for all to see it with me. We need to be careful. The colonial powers in Africa know now that the foundations of their enslavement, of their colonization that never ended, is being shaken violently everywhere right now. If they had treated us well, if they had been good partners, if they had been very respectful, there's no way they would be scared of what is to come. Africans themselves will be the ones defending their institutions and establishments on the continent. But that was never the case. And because they didn't, Russia has come in now and taken advantage of the vacuum they've left, a generational vacuum of disrespect, of pillaging, of destruction, of stealing, of corrupting Africans and leaving its citizens in the quagmire of complete economic degradation. That's what Russia is trying to make right. And this is why African leaders are flocking towards Russia. So what you see happening in Niger, Burkina Faso, Somali, is not going to end there. I see it spreading. And I know that's why they are afraid. I know that's why they want to intervene to send a message. But the collateral damage that will come from that message I don't think that any one of us is prepared for it. So we need to be very cautious. That's my message. Send this video to Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Send it to every single person that is concerned in Nigeria and let them know that we are about to walk into a disaster we may not know how to walk out of. May God bless all of us. Amen. And may God bless you too. That was Joseph Okechuku. He based in America. He is a Nigerian and he is also a Nollywood actor and a YouTuber. Yes, of course, there are so many things I got from this video actually. 
the truth is this everybody should speak up that no invasion and no military action should be taken against these people yes we condemn the coup but we want them to talk we want them to ask questions like why are they coup upon coup in the west africa and other parts of africa if we could find out the reason why this coup is taking place i think to proffer solution to it would be very simple so that is my own take about it i condemn any form of military action that could be taken against them. I employ the ECOWAS African Union and any other people from around the world that want to interfere or intervene in this matter should go diplomatically. And anything more than that will not be acceptable by the Africans and also we that are Nigerians because we are neighboring to these people. We don't want catastrophic situation to be added to what we have been going through. We have been going through a series of insecurity, Boko Haram, ASWAP, Fundani Hesmen. You know, there are so many insecurity, including the agitation that is taking place in the Southeast has turned the zone not to be secured as well. So we don't want insecurity upon insecurity in Africa anymore. So let us use wisdom so that at the end, we'll be able to bring every situation to come and above all, what do the people of Niger want? What they want, I think that is the most important thing. Thank you so much for having time to listen to this video. I am Okocha P myself. Please kindly share this video, subscribe to my channel, and above all, always come by for daily updates. Thank you.